Have you ever noticed that after a difficult experience, particularly one that's really stressful or has an acute sensory element to it, your brain is on higher alert around like-minded stimuli? A good example of this is if you've ever been in a car accident, you might notice that you're a little more tender while you're driving, a little more vigilant or aware to what's happening in the environment. One of the things that a lot of people are not aware of is that after a traumatic experience, our brain doesn't just remember the moment of the trauma. It also encodes all of the contextual cues as well as other surrounding data. In effect, our brain is building a case for the traumatic or stressful event in order to ensure our survival going forward. And in the case that it's building, it's going to be paying attention to all of the sensory elements, any thoughts that we're having at the time. So think about thoughts as cognitions. That's the C in the case. What is our body experiencing in the moment? That's the A, our autonomic responses. The S stands for somatosensory. What is the framework or the narrative of the moment of how our body is making sense of the world? And finally, E stands for emotions. The case for trauma can be very confusing if we don't have that information because we can be walking through our day-to-day -day life after a particularly traumatic or stressful moment and find that we're easily shifted out of a state of balance or agency by unexpected stimuli. Perhaps the expression on somebody's face all of a sudden makes our blood start pumping a little faster. Or if we might notice that our heartbeat speeds up and all of a sudden we start to feel wary or anxious. Our brain is not so good at creating the cohesive story around the stimuli. It's simply building the case to say these stimuli were present when a hard or difficult thing happened. And so therefore, I'm going to have a reaction. This is part of that idea of that 90% of the past defining our present moment and that 90% of our past tied to trauma or stressful experiences gets priority processing because our brain's job is to ensure that we stay safe. The good news is that this is a wonderful opportunity to identify those small shifts in our mind and our body in the presence of the case for trauma and then to proactively apply that CPR for the amygdala exercise. We're wrapping a warm fuzzy blanket around our amygdala and proactively reducing the impact of those trauma or stress triggers. We're helping the brain know that the case for trauma that it's made no longer needs to be a guiding force in how we're moving through our life. If you're not familiar with CPR for the amygdala, we have an entire playlist on this channel and we've linked it below. So check it out and start to learn how to proactively help your amygdala, which is your survival focused brain part, know that it's safe now so that you can continue to build the future that you want to live in. Thank you.